I pray you do. I do lack some part of that good spirit that is in Antony. Let me not hinder Cassius your desires. I'll leave you. Brutus, I do observe you now of late, and I have not from your eyes that gentleness and show of love as I was wont to have. You bear too stubborn and too strange a hand over your friend that loves you. Cassius, be not deceived. If I have veiled my look, I turn the trouble of my countenance merely upon myself. Let not therefore my dear friends be grieved, nor construe any further my neglect than that poor Brutus with himself at war forgets the show of love to other men. Then, Brutus, I have much mistook your passion. Tell me, good Brutus, can you see your face? No, Cassius, for the eye sees not itself, but by reflection, by some other things. Tis just. And it is very much lamented, Brutus, that you have no such mirrors as will turn your hidden worthiness into your eye that you might see your shadow. I have heard where many of the best respect in Rome, except immortal Caesar, speaking of Brutus and groaning underneath this age's yoke, have wished that Brutus had his eyes. To what dangers would you lead me, Cass? Therefore, be prepared to hear. And since you know you cannot see yourself so well as by reflection, I, your glass, will modestly discover to yourself that of yourself which you yet know not of. And, and be not jealous on me, gentle Brutus, were I a common laugher, and did use to stale with ordinary oaths my affection to every new protester. If you know that I do fawn on men and hug them hard and after scandal them, or if you know that I profess myself in banqueting to all the rout, then hold me dangerous. Caesar! What means the shouting? And you fear the people choose Caesar for their king? I do you fear it. Then I must think you would not have it so. I would not, Cassius, yet I love him well. Wherefore do you hold 